Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today I'm with two special guests in the studio with us. They are a married couple, and I am here with... Alex, I almost <laughs> Alex and Austin Thornburg. Woo! So, you guys, how long first have you guys been married? Mm. Let's answer that. Solid year and a half now. Yeah, so. almost two years. It'll be two years mm-hmm. in June. June. Yep, yeah, that was a good wedding. I was yeah. there, and then we jumped in the pool after. Yeah, it was <laughs> such a hot day. <laughs> it was over one hundred and ten degrees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, uh, that was rowdy. Yeah, it, it was, was good, tasty. though. <clears throat> yeah, so we are going to, before we get started, um, we'll just have either one of you, whoever wants to kind of just start with your guys' story and just how you're raised and up until you guys meeting with each other. So if you want, <laughs> Alex, do you want to share about? Yeah, I can go first. Okay. Um, So basically, I was born and raised Lutheran. I was baptized when I was two months old Mm -hmm. and um, was raised with good Christian values. I knew what was right, what was wrong, had those morals um, instilled in me as a young age, but never really went to church, went to Mm -hmm. church on Christmas and Easter, really. And then... um, did VBS sometimes mm-hmm. here and there. Most of the time, my mom and dad would just kind of send me off mm-hmm. to VBS every single week throughout the summer. Mm-hmm. Daycare. Be- so, yeah, it was basically daycare for mm-hmm. them, which was, it was actually really good. I love mm-hmm. VBS. It was one of the most memorable things that I had when mm-hmm. I was younger. Um, but and when we met, I was still Lutheran. Mm-hmm. Um going to college at U of A and very, very deep into sin. Mm. Um, never really, I, I knew I wanted to keep myself for marriage. I wanted mm. to save myself, but at the same time I was tempted. Mm. I wanted to, but didn't want to mm. and all of that. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <coughs> all right, Austin. Awesome, well, a lot like Alex, um, <coughs> you know, born in a, a Christian Catholic household and raised with those same values. And Mm -hmm. it was really (coughs) interesting coming from a kind of like half in half out type of household. So like Mm -hmm. we definitely had those values, but we didn't take it super seriously. Like we didn't go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. My parents did give me, put me through um, like Wednesday night uh, study at at local Mm -hmm. churches. We went to church kind of like the, uh, priesters right Mm -hmm, (laughs) so mm -hmm. yeah uh but i mean and then moving out here (coughs) meeting alex and uh Mm -hmm. well things slowly started to change i was still very much not like i had a relationship with god in the loosest form of that definition like Mm i i've had read portions of the bible i had um differing views on certain things Mm -hmm. like not really sure what to think Mm -hmm. not really sure what i should do just really splintered like, mm. and uh everything changed mm-hmm. when we started dating and everything uh well obviously not initially but mm. yeah. so we'll get to that here in a yeah moment. yeah so getting into that so how long were you guys together before you alex found the lord how long were you guys in a relationship um. So we started dating in January of 2018, Mm -hmm. and then I gave my life um, October of 2020. Mm. So we were together for almost three years. Wow. Yeah. So took a a, a time. (laughs) In that season, you guys... Were you thinking about marriage? Like, were you talking about it? Or Um, I mean, we both (laughs) had the intention of if we're going to be dating... Where it's intended for marriage. Mm-hmm. Like we always thought. It was like the end goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the end goal in yeah. 10 years. It no. wasn't like a, a fling <laughs> right? or like a, yeah, exactly. Everyone gets so comfortable when you don't have yeah. uh, good guidelines. Mm. And can you yeah. explain that? Because 
I think when you guys then did it with the boundaries, you're like, I understand why people get married in six I mean, months. <laughs> like, but let's go. It's not all about, well, you know, the sex, mm-hmm, right? It's mm-hmm. not all about that. But like, I mean, obviously it's a portion of it, but it's, it's the intimacy. It's the most important. Yeah. You don't get to, like we, as we'll talk about later too, we implemented some, um, some yeah. boundaries yeah. Mm-hmm. to keep ourselves yeah. within the bounds of the Lord while we mm. weren't married. And, um, yeah, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's like, like we were talking about just now is like the, the, um, the looseness within the marriage when you mm-hmm. don't have those boundaries, yep. there's not really ever a need to get married. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's just like, why not just stay boyfriend and girlfriend? Yeah. I know plenty of people, um, that don't. Like mm-hmm. they, have, they have children together. They're, they're still dating, but they live together and yeah. there's no commitment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. To me, it, it makes sense. Like the why you want it. It's like, it's a lot of work and you have to do this and that. And it's like, well, what if you then find your quote unquote, a better person or soulmate? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? If you really <laughs> think there's such thing as a soulmate, then you would be tempted to be like, I'll be with you until something better comes. And then I'm not tied down. Like that's yeah. the call. Like, like, what is that ball and chain? Mm-hmm. But that's yeah. not what marriage yep. is. But to the world, that's what it feels like. Mm-hmm. But th- when we realize in Christ, it's not, it's supposed to be a wife submitting to her husband. But the world sees, I think it's also with feminism. It's like men are like women do dominate. They're not, or men go to the other extreme and then they go to the church, right? To like fish out for women. And they want a woman who will do whatever, like they can be living in sin, but Just they want a good woman. Mm-hmm. And so for you guys both, being in the same place that's actually like praise god for that it's yeah, not amen. like it's mm-hmm. not like alex exactly. was just like the strong christian and trying to missionary date you i mean you guys are both <laughs> in the world right like oh, living yeah. Yeah, in yeah. sin yeah, we were you could mm-hmm. yeah totally and so maybe sin. speak a little bit more about that when you guys weren't really living for god what mm-hmm. was like what was going on yeah i can okay. um so like i said i was um going to u of a um, to get my bachelor's, um, at the time it was, uh, physiology and deaf studies. Mm. I was going to go and b- go to med school and become a pediatrician and all of this and ended up going to Italy that summer, mm. um, and decided I was going to become an interpreter instead. Mm. And so that was a little crazy. Um, that whole like section of our dating time mm. was really was in- intense mm-hmm. because we um, we met each other, but we had already started talking back in December because we met on Tinder, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. then he was not in Tucson, and then I ended up not being in Tucson. Mm. So then finally, once we got back into Tucson we um talked and went on a date and everything and then fast forward what three months I think it was like three months in March or April you got shipped off to Texas Mm. for basic Mm -hmm. um for Air Force and then after that you got back and then I left for Italy and then it was just like all these things happening mm-hmm. all at once. And then mm-hmm. uh, fast forward to just daily life. We argued so much, yeah. just mm-hmm. so much sin in our lives. I was just partying a lot, mm-hmm. drinking um, at the end, probably mm, I'd say after my 21st birthday, definitely once I was legal to drink and could mm-hmm. go out and party, I was getting myself into really bad situations and causing mm-hmm. myself to go and drink so much that I would get into an alcohol psychosis. Mm-hmm. And um, there were a couple times where, um, I mean, I don't remember anything, obviously, because mm-hmm. once you get to a certain point, you just black out. Um, but like my sister has recordings of me like so demonized Mm. like it's scary like she'll show me sometimes and I'm like I don't want to see that like that's my past self now Mm -hmm. like praise God for that Mm. but um I mean we just had so many arguments and like Austin would be like oh don't do this and then I'd be like I'm doing it anyways I'm an independent woman Mm. I can do whatever I want Mm because we weren't tied down so it didn't matter but I mean at the same time it 
didn't matter. Oh, it's like tied down. I'm like grounded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. But to the world, what they would say, it wasn't like, yeah. you can't do control me, man. Mm-hmm. I can do what I want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Until you put a ring on it. Yeah. That's the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for you guys, then knowing what it was like, a life of sin, and then what, what was that transition for you guys? Like, mm-hmm. um, I remember the first time when Valerie actually Pedersen at her church, Mm -hmm. now Nelson, Valerie Nelson, um, invited you. So what was that whole season for you then the transition? So, um, my transition after all of that craziness, it Mm -hmm. was like that same week Mm -hmm. that I like had this major, major alcohol psychosis. Like Mm -hmm. it was bad. Like my mom almost called the ambulance, Mm -hmm. Um, I probably should have been hospitalized. It was really bad. But um, that same week, Valerie wanted to take me out for dinner for my birthday. And um, she just like sat me down and was Mm -hmm. like, you call yourself a Christian, Mm. but you're not living what God wants us to live. Mm. And um, she knew like we weren't living for god and we Mm. weren't living what was intended for um our life and i just was like whoa okay like this Mm. is this is not something to joke around about Mm. and um we were i forget exactly where we were i think it was noble hops i'm literally bawling my eyes out Mm -hmm. and we're like praying and i was just like okay like I need to change my life Mm. and then went right back to it. And, um, not until October 4th was when I finally gave my life. Um, probably, I think it was about two or three weeks later, Mm. but there were little things that God was just kept doing in my life to Mm. make me want to search him more. And he was knocking so hard Mm. and I fought it for so long but finally um at the campfire that we Mm -hmm. did at Valerie's house well Mm -hmm. parents house um where we did a prayer and worship was when Mm -hmm. God really spoke to me and was like hey you Mm -hmm. need a today's the day yeah exactly today's the day of (laughs) salvation and so I gave my life and I think it was out until like one or two in the morning, my mom and sister were calling me like crazy, <laughs> wondering where I was. And it was so funny because I picked up the phone. I was like currently crying and I'm like trying to hold back the tears while I'm talking to my mom and my sister. And they're like, where are you? What are you doing? Are you out drunk? Do we mm. need to go pick you up? <laughs> where are you at? And I was like, I'm still at Valerie's house. Don't mm. worry. Like God is good. Mm. I'll explain everything when I get home. And when I got home, I told them everything. And they're like, Mm. you're crazy. What are Mm. you smoking? (laughs) Are you sure you didn't go out drinking? Mm. Um, Because I was just on such a high for Christ. And um, after that, that was when everything changed. And um, I really gave up everything. It was like a whole new person, Mm. really. And uh, um, after that, I started coming to church Mm -hmm. and um, Valerie invited me here at Calvary or Valley Mm -hmm. and got to meet some amazing people. And um, that was when I really connected with Valley and Mm -hmm. we really talked a lot and was like, hey, what are you going to do about Austin? No one knew Austin at the time. (laughs) We were talking about Austin almost every single day. (laughs) And um, I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I love Austin and I want to stay with him. And but like we were obviously not living Mm -hmm. for Christ Mm -hmm. and we were very, very deep in sin. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone's like, you got to break it off. Mm -hmm. Like either he somehow miraculously gives his life and you guys start living pure or you're gonna have to break up with him. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were at Mm In-N-Out and we were praying and I was just like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I have two (laughs) cats that live with Austin. (laughs) And I was like, I just don't know how I'm gonna do it because like the logistics of Mm. trying to keep the cats there because they were mine, Mm -hmm. they... And I was just like, here, Austin, take them. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I was just so focused about that. And God was like, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Your way, the way that you are living is so much more important to me than cats. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'll do it. And so I finally got the nerves like a week or so you, after. I think you had called me one night. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was like in the middle of the week. Yeah, I want to know. Austin it's just like totally out of the <laughs> blue. <laughs> like I had gotten home from work. Uh, I want to say it was I was working days and I had gotten home from work or whatever it may have been. And I was just like getting dressed to go to bed or like get ready to get into the shower or whatever. And like I got a call from Alex and I was just when she told me that like like either we, we have to like take the path, the righteous path or you lose me. Mm. And I was like, what? Where is this coming from? Like, how did, like, mm. how, what happened? Like, and she explained everything to me on the phone. And, like, <clears throat> initially, like, of course, this is the previous um, time before I was saved mm. that I was mad. Yeah. I was very upset. Yeah. And uh, the devil was certainly afoot. Mm. Like, it was scary. Like, yeah. she was trying to bring up scripture, scripture about, like, what we should be doing. And, like, I had previous knowledge of scripture. I mm -hmm. know how to look through the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was scary to see what lengths that the devil will go through to yeah. keep mm -hmm. you in sin. Mm -hmm. He used, like he used me to use scripture again, like gives me the chills. Mm -hmm. He used me to use scripture mm -hmm. against her yeah. mm -hmm. and trying to manipulate God's word. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just like, mm -hmm. that was a, a rough conversation. And then like, there was a point where again, I get the chills again <laughs> that God had told me, no, you have to do this. Mm. Stop fighting it. Mm. And like, I was like, I, there was an epiphany, like just yeah. like where we were talking on the phone. I was like, no, we, I guess we, I guess I can do this. Mm. Yeah. It and literally just like, like wow. flip of a switch where I was like pissed mm -hmm. and super mad and just like, oh, wow. Mm. I guess mm -hmm. I can do this. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. cool. Mm. And like, I was like, well, how do we, how do we do like, what do we have to do? And, and it just, weeks and weeks of like us str struggling to figure out what boundaries we can have and what we can mm. and the the decision for me to to come back to the lord and really dedicate myself and i still need to be taking steps to do that even more so i feel like i'm continuously in some ways mm. falling short but like you got to continue to strive to do better you always yeah. fall short and yeah. <laughs> uh it was really cool to see what because I, I i think honestly like 100 percent that we owe our marriage not only of course to god but to Valerie, mm, to, to yes. David, to mm -hmm. uh, Ravel, you know, to, to our, our mentors, to Morgan, who yeah. married us, right? Yeah. And all of you guys here, without that that uh, mentorship and that reinforcement, we would have fallen flat. Mm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, so we wouldn't then, be where we are if we didn't have that foundation mm -hmm. of God's word, but then also having everyone from church to lift us mm. up. And that was where, like, my That's previous... Good. My previous self, you know, growing up in Bakersfield and like being around mm -hmm. uh, my family, and they they do have godly values. They did teach us mm -hmm. a lot of things. I did go to church, and that was just the thing. I had that seed, yeah, there, and just mm -hmm. wasn't prospering. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So God had already sown, mm -hmm. and, and that's yeah, where, like, I think that water. He was able to speak to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, I mean, uh, we can thank so cool. God. For, and thank our families too, mm -hmm. because if they hadn't raised us the way that we were raised, mm -hmm. we would have never had God in our lives. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, it would have taken a lot. You know? Yeah, exactly. We had that conviction um, that we mm -hmm. weren't living the way that God intended us to mm -hmm. be. Even though I wasn't living in his word or like, or like reading the Bible or going to church, I would still pray, mm -hmm. you know, and I had moments i would still pray to god but like it wasn't a serious relationship mm -hmm. like it is yeah. now it's exactly. a totally Intimate. different dynamic so yeah. yeah so when did you then start coming to church what did that look like uh, <laughs> she kind of had to force me yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did i, I was like weirdos. hey you're coming to church with me this sunday and mm -hmm. he was like if i don't like it i'm never coming yeah. again <laughs> well and, and it didn't like, help okay. that like i had <laughs> Some some uh, mm -hmm. some bad influence where people were like, it's not a good church, you know, you're not gonna mm -hmm. like it, or like, yeah, they're kind of uh, I don't know, just someone said like they're kind of culty and like it obviously it's nothing <laughs> oh, we've like heard that. It all, there's yeah. been so many people that like say that. that. <laughs> and yeah, she really had like like listen, if we're gonna do this, you need to be coming to church with me. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, obviously now in our marriage, that is a requirement mm. for us at mm-hmm. least, you know, yeah. Yeah. when Levi gets old enough, he can make the decision for himself when he's yeah. young, we'll obviously bring him to church. But yeah. once mm-hmm. he is an adult, mm-hmm. that is his decision. But yeah. as adults, we, that we are coming to church. If we are here in town and we're not like, like sick, mm-hmm. we're coming to church. Mm. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, initially she had to like, <laughs> I did not want to be here. Like I, I did not like worship. <laughs> I was like, was why so does everybody have their hands in the air? Like what is going on? <laughs> like, that, I mean, that's how I felt too mm. when I first started coming because Lutheran yeah. churches, no, do you, you're like this the whole time and yeah. you sing the hymns and that's just how it is. Mm. Um, and so I was the exact same way when I first started that's coming, but it was just so funny how mm-hmm. long it took you for mm. God to really start is working it? in you mm. until you started fully like actually it had to be at least surrendering. Like, two months of mm. like me coming to church and yeah. just like going through the motions it's like crossing your arms like i'm just like no, i would i would just like <laughs> yeah. i would just sit there and like have my head down and just like like is this someone like has he's like i have to it's be here 30 minutes to hear them sing are you happy alex <laughs> <laughs> i was like I'm, I'm doing this to be with her and that was the that was the problem is it, was, yeah. it wasn't an, like initially I was like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I can devote myself to Christ, mm. but I was, I was there because of her, Yeah. but in the long run, it ended up working out mm. and yeah. really finding when we decided that we were going to get married, mm-hmm. that things were going to change. But before that, obviously when I was in church, yeah. it was just a uh, 30 minutes of devotion. <laughs> Yeah, like, I grew up like going to Catholic church. More like an I, hour, actually. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, Be honest. Like, and I was like, oh, dude, like, uh. I want to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be here right now. It was just, mm-hmm. it was terrible. Like, but it taught me a lot because yeah. now I, I love mm-hmm. worship. I love hearing yeah. Pastor Craig speak. Mm-hmm. I love Wednesday night service. I don't come to him a whole lot right now due to scheduling and mm-hmm. the baby. And, but it's, I, it's, everything has changed in the past. Yeah. Literally like, night and day difference. Oh, like oh, when yeah. we say later what you do and what you guys like, just how you're serving, it's just so beautiful. But, yeah. um, I remember one time my dad had told me, he's like, I think like, Austin came up to me one time and it blessed me so much. He's like, honestly, I don't really know what you said, but all I know is that the Lord just spoke to me like what through what you said. And so it just like really mm-hmm. touched me and you saying that to him really meant a lot. But what was that for you? When was it the Lord starting um, to speak to there you? There were and a touch number you? of instances where he was during his Sunday s- sermons that he would, there would be something that he would say. It would be a script, mm-hmm. some Something that was quoted directly from the Bible, mm-hmm. not like the, his own speakings, but like mm-hmm. uh, obviously he did have some points in time where like he would say something that he was trying to make a point on that would just like, like oh, right yeah. into the chest. And you're like, well, yeah. okay, that's, that was to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, yeah. like how he talks, it, it makes me laugh because like to this day, he still jokes about it. Like, I know some people out there you're here like, and it's like, this me. is me. <laughs> and I'm like, I always think that day, I'm like, it's awesome. That's me. Yeah, like, every single time. I remember that one mm. Sunday that you were like, man. That was just like that word that Craig said was for me. I I need to go up and tell him. Should I? And I was like, Yeah, for sure. Aww. You should. Yeah. That'll bless his day. Mm-hmm. And he still talks about yeah. it. He still remembers that. <laughs> it happens so often, especially when we were like brand new to each other, mm-hmm. like like newly in Christ, and we were trying to get through our our um, our courtship, our proper courtship. Mm-hmm. That it just like out of the blue. Man, mm-hmm. there it is. Like he mm-hmm. would say something, or yeah. I would be reading something, and it would come to me, and uh, it would really weigh on me. But it would take time to come into effect mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. You know, it wouldn't always yeah. be like immediately. But there were a lot of things that would weigh on me, and what Pastor Craig would say. Yeah, that I just I, that's why I love coming here. There's been no mm-hmm. other church that I've been to that I enjoy being here this mm-hmm. much. Oh yeah, so we're um, not a cult. No, no. absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> like, it was relatively no. quick that I couldn't like. Because at first I didn't want to come, so I, I like I would come because skeptical, I was here. Yeah. And I was skeptical, and people were. I had heard that rumor, and I was like, "Well, I'm now. I like now that you hear the rumor, you want to reinforce it, right?" Yeah. Well, I, I couldn't find any ammunition, so yeah. um, obviously that's not the case. But so. sadly, what's mm-hmm. cultish, which we're gonna go into nowadays, is boundaries or oh, purity. Yes. That's cultish to people. Like that's weird, mm-hmm. and it's like it's actually biblical, and the Bible talks, it talks about, about it, it. How we need to flee youthful lust, not. Mm-hmm arouse love before it's time, run from anything that simulates youthfulness uh, and all these things. But there's this thing in us where we want to fight back. Like we don't want to believe that. We want to believe that I can c- handle it. I'm okay. It's fine because it's not oh, yeah. lust. It's love. We try to justify. But so for you guys, what was that transition from, okay, now we're trying to do it the right way, the way that Alex wants it so you can get her. But then yeah. what was that transition to so, be like, we want to get married. We want to do it right. Where, how did that start? Off. So 
initially, obviously, like the the main goal was to get married at first when we first started dating. So yeah. that was still the end goal, even mm-hmm. though that now we were introducing Christ into our relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, just now that it added extra boundaries. Yeah. So we couldn't keep doing the things that we had been doing, like being intimate and mm-hmm. physical and uh, even just being alone together. You know, yeah. Being intimate together alone is still something that new um, lovers, I would say, mm-hmm. should be watching out for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Spending for sure. time alone is... Uh, dangerous i get concerned Very. if you are alone and nothing's happening <laughs> yeah. like, right uh, are you guys actually like i mean like, obviously like each other? when you, you like, really each, like other, each other you that's inevitable it's it's natural. You, that, that you want yeah. to do that where you are as god intended we love you yeah. know mm-hmm. I, I love my wife yeah. mm-hmm. you know anyways you get the point but like it's just when we first started doing our courtship it was extremely difficult to come back from having mm. been physical yeah in yeah. the fullest extent and cold turkey yeah like yeah. the next day so like, we were just mm. trying to figure out what was going to work and what wasn't and that's mm-hmm. where we sat down with um with uh david and Ravel, mm-hmm. and we had talked about what boundaries we they asked us what boundaries we wanted to set yeah. which was not something i was anticipating mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so which gave us the ball is on our court now yeah like on second thought, like which was good because it really let which isn't cultish. No, it, no, it, it it's it's you. It's yours. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. It's your yeah. choice. Yeah. What you want to do, which is also the same thing. It's your choice if you want to to pursue a relationship in purity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is a lot more exactly. difficult. You have to. There's a lot more. If you don't introduce the physical side of it, I feel like there's a. Um, you. It makes it a, just a touch better for you. If you mm-hmm. you don't you're not it's the forbidden fruit that you now that you know mm, yeah. <laughs> you mm-hmm. yep. open that yeah. door yeah so going back on that is a lot harder I feel yeah like. it yeah. was definitely really really difficult <laughs> um but I feel like when we first started trying to be pure mm-hmm. it was all in our will yeah like, we tried so hard because we wanted to it wasn't because mm-hmm. God wanted us to yeah. and um it was definitely once we figured that out and we're like, okay, we need to give this relationship to you, God, because we can't do this in our own strength, yeah. obviously. Like, this is not something that we can do physically on our own. We need God to help mm. us and um, purify us and really have the Holy Spirit work through us mm. in order to get eventually to being pure. Mm-hmm. It definitely wasn't easy. Not at all, but Mm -hmm. it finally, once we did get those boundaries instilled and we had that one, I think it was a Sunday after church, um, we sat down and we actually wrote everything down. Like, this is what we're not going to do. We're not going to be at Austin's apartment by ourselves. We're not Mm going to do this. We're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having to go back and rewrite some things because the boundaries that we had set weren't working Mm -hmm. because we We were open. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We were still letting things happen. Yeah. And, um, eventually we got it to where we were like, okay, we are good on our boundaries. We can, we can make it till our wedding. Mm -hmm. We're good. Even though it was still hard. We had those temptations. We really, really desired to be together. And, um, if I, didn't have God in my life that just wouldn't have happened Mm. I I would have totally we would have totally fallen and it just wouldn't have worked out for Mm. sure definitely like you had mentioned this like for the new the new couples out there Mm -hmm. is that in order to to set those boundaries up it's important to like like how Morgan and Belly had I'm sorry Morgan and Belly that's the couple that comes to mind but Mm -hmm. for David and Ravel when they did that for us they let us choose it really let God weigh in Mm -hmm. on that on Mm -hmm. our minds like yeah. When you set those boundaries, you're like, is this something that would God would be okay with? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> a lot of our inspiration was with Morgan and Ravel. Yeah. They mm-hmm. were like our, mm. you know, our mentors, but David also for myself was too. But, and the boundaries that they had set was the foundation that we worked off on our own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had left some other areas up for interpretation, like, like us being alone, mm-hmm. uh, watched, like if we wanted to watch TV at my, my apartment mm-hmm. together. We were okay with that at first. And eventually mm-hmm. that went away because it just did not <laughs> work. <laughs> not, good. Be- <clears throat> not good. Being alone <laughs> together is 
bad. Like, yeah. Don't do it. it just, and so to the, I've had people literally tell me, Mariah, you're being legalistic. Why are you doing mm-hmm. what you do? And they're like, you have to give yourself some room to have self-control. And I'm like, no, no. because that's no. like saying, put yourself at the edge of a cliff mm-hmm. and Hope try to balance. And it's like any yeah. gust of wind or someone being crazy mm-hmm. or stupid in a moment can, uh-huh. why? Emotion. Like it doesn't, my self-control is doing what Lord willing, like how God's really been <clears throat> helping people hold Ryan and I accountable to not be alone because I'm like, it says flee youthful lust or anything that stimulates youthful mm-hmm. lust. And it says to not have the appearance of evil. Like when mm-hmm. you're alone, let's just even say people are great and they're not doing anything. Just the appearance of evil exactly. and things of like, there's no more shame when you're not alone. Cause when you're alone or you're driving together, people are like, mm, mm-hmm. I don't know what they're doing or what they're probably. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, just don't even give opportunity. The Bible says, do not give mm-hmm. opportunity to the flesh, which we might be good because i see couples do this all the time they're good for like two weeks or two months and they get so excited and that's how even i was like when i'm in sin or when people are showing mm-hmm. pornography or masturbation like mm-hmm. oh i was good for like two months and they get really excited but like you said alex they're doing their own strings mm-hmm. whereas exactly. for us it's like that's why we have accountability not that that's we also need the fear of god but we really there is something i was reading in the bible with um the israelites the reason why they didn't sin was because they had also you have the fear of god but also you do have the fear of discipline and consequences Mm -hmm. because there's consequences to crossing Mm -hmm. those boundaries Mm -hmm. for sure but you're gonna say something we paid greatly for it Mm -hmm. oh yeah because that we did had we did cross that boundary earlier in our relationship um it made it infinitely more difficult for us later on Mm -hmm. so that's why i say that by opening that door you're going to make your life harder yeah. Oh, and yeah. And having those, if I had to go back and do it again, I wouldn't even have let us driven in a car alone together. Mm. Uh-uh. Yeah. Um, it's mm. just, just, again, it's the appearance. Yeah. Mm. I mean, ob- you can, obviously, anything's possible with, with the will yeah. of like your own personal self and your mm. own, you don't, when you don't have self control because you're yeah. letting emotions run. But the boundaries that we had set were things like, you know, okay, we're not allowed to be alone together. We're not, um, not very limi- limited physical touch. Like, yeah. I think we only allowed each other to hold, hold hands. hands and maybe a that was brief, it. like real brief hug, mm-hmm. like yeah. like you would yeah. to one like second friendly like hug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At first and... we were like, oh, it's okay, like if we were to like have a normal hug or mm-hmm. like um, we didn't have any specification mm-hmm. on like if we were to like put our hands on our mm-hmm. lap or something like that, um, eventually we're like, we can't do that. Yeah. That's, that's a no go. Like that's do not touch my leg. thigh or shoulder or oh. even my head. My like don't touch me. My, oh. like, no, it's my like hand neck. is all you got. Like, no. Any touch. Yeah. It was immediate. Yeah. I just, I couldn't handle it. Which mm-hmm. is a, a beautiful it, thing. It, and that's what it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. Like if you read song of Solomon or song of songs, like mm-hmm. that's what it's for is marriage. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I always say this to people. It's like, there's your body naturally, like for we, it prepares us for that, for, Mm -hmm. you know, like with you and Austin, you know, have baby Mm -hmm. Levi. But if something is preparing you, like anything you do, preparing you for sex and you know, people themselves with their bodies know what that is. Guys, it's a lot easier. Like we joke, (laughs) I'm like with Ryan, I'm like, you have an easier warning than I do as a woman. And so- just to really care about each other as your brother and sister. Cause until you're married, mm-hmm. that's all Ryan and I are. So yep. we have to be so careful exactly. because until I say I do, like my dad always says, if the Lord has you not marry each other and you didn't marry each other, what if you cross these, ba- yeah. like these lines and then you're like, Whoa, that's weird. Like that. Yeah. And so look at it as that's your brother or that's your sister, mm-hmm. because yeah. until the day that's all you are. Like, yeah. I know people are like, Oh, but we're basically married or we're so close. And it's yeah. like, no, you're not. Yeah, it doesn't it's... count. It doesn't count until yeah. you say I do and you sign the papers. Exactly. And so Austin, I want you to talk a little bit about that for the male side of it, mm-hmm. for men out mm-hmm. there who, you know, that the slightest touch or something for it, you it is really too was. much. How did you communicate? Was it we at would... times, did you not want to say that to Alex, because you're like, I kind of want to like be in the moment. No, and you're right. That did happen. There yeah. were times where, like, especially initially when we we were still learning what boundaries worked and which ones didn't, mm-hmm. um, where we would hold hands, or we would kind of mm-hmm. like you know hold each other on the couch and mm-hmm. like and well, obviously, 
um, I would get excited. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that was the yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're already Stop. introduced. Like that yeah. point there alone was like, mm-hmm. that's where we have to like draw the line. Yeah, that's yeah. where we should As have. soon as I would start getting <laughs> um, excited, mm-hmm. it was, that's where we would, okay, too much. Recalibrate. Adjust. Yeah. It's, we gotta well, break it's it like off. Joseph, like flee, run, drop your coat and run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if you make the other person offended, because Ryan <laughs> does that with me sometimes where it's like, even me just laying my head or being close to him. Mm-hmm. And I just get so like, there's something in me as a woman that gets like offended. I'm like, but I, what did I do? Take and he's like, compliment. I love you so Take much. It is a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> I love you so much that it can't be. And that's how we always joke. We're like, no, I just love you. I love you so much that yep, I need to we distance myself. And yeah. so it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So don't be so offended. Funny. Because if any other woman had done that same mm-hmm. thing, when some, when a man really loves a yeah. very specific woman, the one mm-hmm. woman he wants to marry. Yeah. If someone else had done that, like someone fell asleep on me mm-hmm. on accident, yeah. that wouldn't be something yeah. that would get me going. Mm-hmm. But when we were dating and when she would do that, mm-hmm. instantaneously, you I was just like, yeah. okay, this is too much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I take it as a compliment because yeah. that's exactly yeah. what it is. And I, that's one thing that I want to say too, especially for like you were saying, to, for some recommendations for the, mm-hmm. the men out there. Um, do not allow physical touch, you know, yeah. maybe a handhold, but as soon as mm-hmm. you start to notice that this is going to be too much, tell mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Be honest yeah, with them. them. It's, it, it, it's, it's honestly a good thing. It's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. It is a compliment. I really love you. It, in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. Just you holding their hand alone is enough to set you off. Well, then like, that's great because that's a good start to your marriage. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So Amen. That's it, really good just advice. just shows how much love. That's one thing I tried to explain to her is that I love mm-hmm. you so much. Mm-hmm. Like you were just saying, this is, I can't do. Yes. <laughs> there was this Even the way you look at me. where he literally just like pushed me away. <laughs> He's like, go. I can't. I can't. And I was like, what? Okay. It was, okay. It was to the point where <laughs> I was so good. worried about our mm-hmm. wedding day. When we were holding our hands for our vows, oh no! I, w- I wore two pairs of underwear <laughs> just to make sure that it uh, it wasn't a problem. Compression God underwear. Me. <laughs> Compression underwear. Uh, I didn't want to embarrass myself on yeah. our big wedding day. <laughs> so <laughs> this is uh, this is very personal. I was like, I, should That's I tell good. you about this? No, it's well, good. It's, it's advice it's for true. Ryan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe he might he might need that. We'll help it was him to the point where I had, I had called David. Like a couple weeks like, in advance, I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can handle this, dude. I'm gonna have to prepare. Like, he's like, do what you gotta do. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna buy like, this underwear. Like saran wrap. Cassie <laughs> <laughs> belt. Do it every it, day. It really is yeah. a testament to, yeah. mm. to it was, God's. He's gone. It was so funny. We, um, when I was getting everything ready for the wedding, we had these cowbells mm-hmm. that said ring for a kiss on them. Mm-hmm. And I totally should have not used those. Because yeah, like, everyone's like, ding, ding, ding. And we're like, Oh, can we no, wait till we again. leave? Yeah. <laughs> like, can we please go? Can we can we just leave? I was, like, Guys, I was just like, joking to Ryan about that. I know. I was just like, I was before this podcast, we were on the phone and I was like, I feel like we're going to be like, okay, well, have a fun party. Like, we're going to go because, I mean, this is our first time ever kissing each mm-hmm. other. And, and I'm just like, wow. Like, I'm already just so excited. And mm-hmm. we're even just saying, we're like, it's just going to be like a peck for us. Like, I really don't. It would think yeah, we moderation. can because I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't know like how much we can do in front of people where it's like, that's a lot. Until you get like too for, uncomfortable to yeah. Like, and yes. so for, for oh, yeah. couples who are hearing this, you're like, Oh my goodness, you guys sound so weird or so yeah. childish. It's like when you do things, God, w- God's way, even you can laugh all you want, but mm-hmm. there's a blessing. There's mm-hmm. a blessing oh, yeah. involved that other people yeah. can mock, scoff, whatever they want. But it's real easy yeah. to armchair quarterback and tell us, yeah. you know, like, oh, you guys are ridiculous that this is, yeah. like, you know, but while, meanwhile, you know, not to call anybody out, but like you, when you yourself are still in sin with having sexual relations with yeah. your your girlfriend or fiance, mm-hmm. especially the fiancés out there, I see it so often yeah. when people get engaged and they're like, oh, yep, this is the ticket to where we can start yeah, having sex now. No. Mm-hmm. You, mm-hmm. You gotta start wearing yeah. the ring. Or yeah. people where yeah. they have these long mm-hmm. engagements. I know. Where years. they are, um, engaged for like four or five years and they're just waiting for that one day mm-hmm. specifically like this venue. their five year mark or their 10 year mark on this one day that they got mm-hmm. together way 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 back when so um 
that's just not worth it in God's eye. Mm -hmm. Obviously, for you to sit down and truly have that relationship with God, you would know that that's not how it should be. Yeah. So having those short engagements, we, we were um, engaged for four months and we were like that that was it like that was plenty yeah. for us we we're like okay we need to get married like asap and everyone's like is alex pregnant like <laughs> what's going on no. and she was not pregnant I, I, I was <laughs> not <laughs> pregnant yes six it took later. yeah six months later i was pregnant mm, but <laughs> yeah well if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video if you like to listen to us wherever your podcast just type in calvary conversations you can also follow us to check out our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. And this is a listener supported. So if you'd like to donate, you can do that in the description below. And if you want to check out anything else, you can check out our website at calvaryconversations.com. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.